Okay, hey, this is Ryan. I'm the head of the Proxy Network support team, and I'm here with a demonstrational video of our Private Cloud Edition. The Private Cloud Edition is Proxy Network's flagship product, and it consists of three components. The proxy host is the agent that gets installed on each of the remote machines that you'd like to access. The proxy host runs as a service in Windows, so it's always on and at the ready and listening for connections. And we have a proxy deployment tool, which lets you pre-customize your settings and then push out the proxy host with your desired settings. So that way your hosts are deployed the way you want from the get-go. So that's the client. On the other end, the proxy master is the viewer, which can be used to take remote control of your machines. The proxy master is also our classic viewer that's you know been around since the inception of proxy way back in the early 90s. And this isn't going away, so you'll still have this ability. But the big news for proxy lately is really the proxy web console server that sits in the middle. The proxy web console server is software that gets basically it's software that gets installed on a Windows Server 2008 or 2012 in your environment and acts as the hub in our hub and spoke connectivity model. And you own your data with proxy because all of the screen data goes through your server in your environment that you own. You know, not in the case with some of our competitors that are hosted services. So let me bring up our proxy web console's landing page here. The landing page lets you log in to see and connect and connect your machines and do your job. And then the share my desktop button allows for a temporary proxy host to be instantly launched to make your machine accessible on the fly. So when I log into the proxy web console, I will see all of my available host machines here on the home tab. The all host group represents every single host machine and um, I've actually got a, several groups created here, you know, based on, let's say, business unit or, you know, department of your company. You can make this however you'd like here. Um, the host on demand group here is the bucket that contains the machines that have the, the instant proxy host launched on their machine. And the proxy host on demand will also allow you to pin it so it will survive reboots. The act of doing this will cause the host on demand to relaunch uh, as a service. And therefore will not have any UAC input control woes that would happen when the proxy host client is not running elevated or any other non-elevated remote access clients for that matter. So the proxy host will be accessible for connectivity now as a service and then can be killed by the end user at any point, you know, so they can get the remote access client off of their machine when you're done supporting them. Um, proxy host on demand will be removed. It'll drop off the list momentarily and I'll just go back to the, the home tab here to pick where we left off. The host tab is where you would go to set up your groups of machines, maybe based on business unit or location or what have you. And this can act this can mirror your active, active directory or you can you know make your own structure here, however you please. The accounts tab is where we go to tell the software who can log in and who can have access to what. The process looks like this. Click import new account, tell the software who you had in mind here. And this will mirror your Active Directory too. So if you have users of groups in Active Directory, you, know, you can set access policies tied to this. So when I tell the software I had John Smith in mind, uh, we'll tell the software what type of user it is. Administrative user would be typically the land manager, the IT administrator. The master user is the designation for everybody else, everybody that would use proxy on a day-to-day -day basis. So the last step is what does he have access to? The all host group is everything. Or if I only want this uh, fellow getting access to the uh, end user PCs and host on demand machines. Um, let's just say I'll click next here and when I click save, um, when I click save, he will be able to see, support and connect to the machines within these groups here. And it's effectively the Windows security model behind the scenes here. Um, cancel out of that. So that's defining who gets access to what in proxy. Uh, let's launch a connection real quick and show you what it's all about. Okay, so connecting to a machine is as simple as clicking the machine as it's listed to you here. Now, the machines can be displayed in a couple different fashions here. Uh, the default behavior is that the machines will appear to you in the fashion of their NetBIOS computer name, but we can also have them report to the server as the identity of the logged in username or, the, or both. So we can see how this one is showing up as domain slash user four on demo host four. So there's a variety of different ways we can have them show up to you and it'll all help because you can, you know, search for them and because you can all search for them based on the name that they show up as. So if I do star host four star and search for that, I'll get, you know, whatever's got host four in the string there. So let me connect to my host number four here.
Oops, okay, and once I'm connected, uh, I want to bring two points of attention here. There's going to be the connection controls at the top here, and then there's a couple extra things we can do at the bottom, like file transfer and remote management. So the connection controls are at the top here, starting with like fit to window. We can, uh, like, I like to like fit to window the best here because it lets us drag the edges of the connection window to size it up our way. Uh, but there's also fit one to one, which is the original mode, which is a one to one mapping of that machine's uh, resolution to yours. Um, mouse icon means you're driving, you have input control, if you click that you'll go into view only mode so you're not disturbing the end user's keyboard and mouse. To the right of that we have our send control or delete, and then this one allows control or delete as well as a couple other common windows keystrokes. Uh, we can suppress the end user's keyboard and mouse with the touch of a button here. You can automatically share the clipboard so you can just you know, copy and paste stuff in and out of the machine you're controlling. To the right of that we have chat so you can talk with the end user if, chat, if uh, the phone's not available and then a screen snipping tool. Uh, beneath that, we have the connection controls at the bottom for extra stuff like file transfer, and this is basically a drag and drop sort of deal here. The left side represents your file system and the, the right side represents the remote machine's file system. It's literally gonna be like a drag and drop sort of, uh, sort of deal here. Uh, the remote management tab allows us to get visibility into some machine variables behind the scenes. Um, I won't cover everything here, but I'll cover the highlights. Um, one can expect to, you know, restart a service here, you can kill a process here, um, make one-off registry edits behind the scenes again. Um, the Windows Event Viewer logs will populate here. This allows you to get access to a bunch of things behind the scenes that we know you can access in Windows, but we tried to, you know, make it convenient for you to find and get access to these things, you know, without doing it in front of the end user. So that's the, that's the tour of the connection window here. So next I'd like to talk a little bit about the proxy host control panel settings here. Uh, if I open up the host control panel here, you'll see a tabbed interface uh, that basically lets you, you know, hand configure what type of remote access behavior you're looking for here. And of course this can be password protected you know, from the end user. I'll start with the access tab here. So the question to ask yourself is, do you want to just be able to click the machine and get right in? Then okay, you go with no permission required. Um, if you have a policy that requires end users you know, be aware of all connections, um, you can set this to the middle radio button and this will prompt the end user for connections. So you'll only get in if they let you. The third radio button is kind of an in-between setting. They'll still be prompted to let you, uh, you know, with an accept or reject button. Uh, but if nobody's there to accept or reject you after 30 seconds or 10 seconds, uh, you'll be able to get connected anyways. Um, another thing to consider might be the, uh, the naming convention for how your hosts appear to you. Uh, we have it set, you know, if you want your machines to appear by the username on the computer name, we can set the host to percent username percent on percent name percent so that they'll appear in a more, you know, more friendly fashion if you're not in love with your uh, current naming convention. We also have choices over whether or not you want the tray icons to be hidden or visible or only visible during connections or just visible or just invisible at all times. There's a connection beep upon connections and also an active users list which can be enabled or disabled. Um, you know, you, you basically define your own remote access rules with proxy, um, and, and I'll leave you with that here. Those are the highlights in the, the host control panel settings. And going back to the web console here, the one thing to be thinking about is the amount of people that would be using proxy all at the same time. Um, the software, the base price for the software includes one administrative license, everybody needs one of those. And then the, the master users, being the middle account type, this is the account destination for everybody else using the software. So if you have 10 people on your support desk, but only maybe five of you work at the same time, we'd love to sell you 10 licenses, but you'd only need five. Um, so you'd just be thinking about the number of people using the software all at once, and that's how we can come up with uh, the amount of licenses you would need. The Proxy Network's Private Cloud Edition allows you to own, operate, and manage your own remote access support portal under your roof. Our software is available for on-premise trials, and we invite you to come talk to us about your remote access needs.